excerpt from the chapter, How I Learned That, Come On, Let's Go, were the most important words. In 1971, the animation company Hanna-Barbera had this great idea to do a remake of the Charlie Chan detective films as a Saturday morning cartoon series entitled The Amazing Chan and the Chan Clan where the famous detective would be the father of ten children, all believing they were great crime solvers like their dad. Aware that all the previous films of Charlie Chan were done in yellow face, that is, the actor playing Charlie Chan was white, but made up to look Chinese, Hanna-Barbera decided that all the voices in the Chan clan would belong to Asian Americans, and the cartoon characters did not have to speak in broken English. To add to the political correctness, Key Luke, the actor who had portrayed the number one son in the Charlie Chan movies of the 1930s, would give voice to Charlie Chan, the only Chinese American to actually play the famous detective. Virginia was cast to voice the role of Susie, the 17-year-old, the oldest Chan daughter. My voice was cast for Mimi, the six-year-old, the youngest Chan daughter. The Lee sisters morphing into the Chan sisters. Our recording sessions could definitely become tedious. Some specific lines were recorded over and over with different vocal intonations. Come on, let's go! Sotto voce. Come on, let's go! impatiently. Come on, let's go! with the childlike whine. The recording sessions ended with director Joe Barbera saying, Thank you very much everyone. See you on the next one. Which I came to learn wasn't always true. I didn't get a call back like you did. They must be replacing my voice. Virginia told me after the second week. The incivility of Hollywood, the universal technique of the non-call, always left you wondering, what did you do wrong not to be asked back? The politically correct decision to use only Asian American voices lasted for about three weeks, and then slowly but surely, like the tide creeping in, the Asian American voices started being replaced by white actors' voices. The explanation given was that those at the top of the Hanna-Barbera food chain felt that their Saturday morning audiences couldn't understand the dialogue spoken with heavy Asian accents. Virginia didn't speak with an Asian accent. She may have rushed the ending of sentences, but being replaced because she had an Asian accent was a total lie. Seeing new cast members at the table reading every week was very disconcerting. A very young Jodie Foster, in one of her first professional gigs, voiced the role of Annie Chan, replacing a young Asian-American actress before the fifth episode. The casting of cartoon voices appeared to be more fickle than even the casting of live-action comedy and dramas, where an actor was actually seen.